I'd ask the photographers, please, to uh, take their seats. And by the way, during the press conference, uh, please don't use a flash. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference for Winter Sleep, which is in competition at the Festival International du Film in Cannes this year. It had its premiere yesterday, and already Variety, among others, has hailed it as a magnus opum. Le Monde uh, called it un film magnifique. Télérama l'a qualifié de 3h15 de pur bonheur. It's a great pleasure to introduce to you, to have with us so many of the film's makers and stars with us. I will introduce them to you, starting at the far end of the table with our interpreter, Kerem Ayan, who's also the vice director of the Istanbul Film Festival. Next to him, the film's producer, Alexandre Malagui. It's his second year in a row in competition in Cannes because he brought us last year the film Le Passé, The Past. Next to him, the actress, IndieWire, called her stunningly beautiful, a star of uh, Turkish television in the role of Nial Melissa Susan. An actress as well, who's also shot with uh, Nuri. She's a director in her own right. This is her first, fourth script with Nuri, this co-script writer, Ebru Ceylan. Uh, this is going to take a while to get through Nuri uh, Birger Jalan's uh, introduction. The festival showed his first film, a short, Koza. It was followed by his second feature, Clouds of May. In 2003, Uzak took three prizes, the Grand Prize of the Jury and Best Actor Prize, which was attributed ex aequo to the male leads. In 2006, Climates won the Fipreski Prize. In 2008, Three Monkeys won Best Director and, of course, uh, three years ago in 2011, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia won the Grand Prize of the Jury. It's a great honor to introduce the film's director and co-scriptwriter, Nuri Bilt Jalan. The film's producer, it's her fourth time producing with Nuri. Um, she's uh, after Once Upon a Time, Three Monkeys and Climates, Zineb Uzbatur Atakan. In the role of Aidan, a stage actor, Haluk Bilginer, who we've seen in Miranair's Reluctant Fundamentalist. We know him from his long running appearance in the British TV series EastEnders. He's moved back to Turkey recently and uh, worked a lot on stage. He fortunately hasn't retired as his character has. No. <laughs> And this role is a bit of a stretch for, I think, for our next uh, guest, because she's famous in Turkey, not only as a TV actress, but also as a comedian. Her role isn't uh, that uh, comical. She plays Nekla. Please welcome Demet Akba. <laughs> and finally, a longtime collaborator of Nuri's. He goes back with Nuri as uh, far as climates in 2006, the cinematographer Gurkan Teryagi. I'm going to open up the uh, discussion immediately. We have a question in the first row. Hi, uh, this is Samir Agaroi from Radio Free Europe. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for this astonishing movie. My question is for Mr. Jalan. Uh, I want to know more about dialogues, these astonishing dialogues. I want to know if you achieved it via screenplays or you led your actors to improvise. Uh, let me speak Turkish, maybe. Uh, önce şunu söylemem lazım. Uh, filmin çıkış noktası, Chekhov'un birkaç kısa hikayesidir. Uh, son kreditlerde yazdığı gibi, uh, Chekhov'un birkaç kısa öyküsünden esinlenilmiştir. I'd like to say that the starting point uh, for the film... Would you mind speaking in English? We're going to do it on table in English. Okay, I'll do my best now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. okay. So, uh, well, I'm not as good in English than in French, but it's okay. Uh, so the, the, the, the departure of the movie is three short stories, uh, some short stories by uh, Chekhov, as you might see at the uh, end credits of the movie. Ee, diyaloglar tabii yani Chekhov'dan bazı diyaloglar da var ama çoğunu tabii biz Ebru ile yazdık. Ee, e, diyaloglara epey bağlı kaldığımız söylenebilir. Yani ben aslında 
çekime girmeden diyaloglara çok bağlı kalmak istiyordum. Yani biraz okuma yaptık, çok az yaptık ama yani hı hı. bir iki defa öyle bir araya geldik. Hani birkaç kelimeler falan düzelttiğimiz oldu o sırada ama çekimde çok bağlı kalmak istediğim için çok iyi oyuncularla çalışmak istedim. Çünkü sadece iyi oyuncular, çok iyi oyuncular sizin yazdığınızı bir yol bulup ağızlarına oturtabiliyorlar. Ee, onun için e, mesela amatörlerle çalıştığınızda söz gelimi e, diyaloglarınızı kesinlikle onlara uydurmak zorundasınız. Ama sadece profesyoneller siz ne yazarsanız yazın. Hatta bazen şöyle bir dezavantajı oluyor. Yani diyalogunuz kötü oluyor ama o kadar iyi söylüyor ki o kötülüğü fark etmiyorsunuz. Yanlışlığı diyeyim ya da. Yani çok güzel oturtuyorlar ağızlarını. O yüzden çok e, iyi oyuncular olmasına özellikle dikkat ettim bu defa. Evet, ama olsun. hiç doğaçlama yapmadık mı? Yaptığımız oldu ama bu doğaçlamalar sırasında da çok şey değiştiğini düşünmüyorum. Yani ne söyleneceği değil de ama nidalar... Bir belli bir rahatlama geliyor falan ya başka şeyler oldu ama diyaloglara epey bağlı kalınmış bir film bu. Je le fais en français. Hein? I'm going to give the translation in French, says the interpreter at the podium. There's a lot of dialogue in the film. You have text from Chekhov and from the scriptwriter. It's a film with a lot of dialogue, so I wanted to have real professionals, because I think that they, even if the dialogue is quite heavy, the with amateur actors, it could have been difficult to carry these dialogues. That's why I wanted to work uh, with real professionals. Uh, Nuri, there's, the dialogue isn't only wonderful, but it's copious. Uh, it, it's, this seems to be new for you. I don't remember so much dialogue in your previous films. Were you holding back? Was a, how did the dialogue develop? Uh. Diyaloglar niye arttı? Aslında ben diyaloğu çok severim. Ben ilk filmim Kasabada çok diyalog yazmıştım. Fakat onları e, bir kere filmi sesli çekmediğimiz için beceremedik. Yani e, iyi olmadı. Ondan sonra bir korku geldi bana herhalde. Ondan sonra bir süre diyalogdan kaçtım. Ama diyalogsuz yani e, sinemayı da çok severim. Ama diyaloğu da çok severim. Yani mesela tiyatroyu çok severim. Yani daha çok diyaloglardan oluşur. Ee, bir de mesela biraz edebi bir dil ee, edebiyatta çok kullanılıyor ve <laughs> in fact, uh, I like dialogue a lot. In my first film, Kasaba, I used a lot of dialogue, but it's a, it's a film that we didn't shoot uh, live with sound, so we had some problems with that. Then I became a bit fearful of dialogue, so I avoided using too much dialogue. But I love the theater, and in this film, we did use a lot of dialogue, a lot of text. E, diyaloglar konusunda e, şunu da söylemem gerekir. Yani e, sadece diyalog artışı değil, biraz da edebi, e, yani sinema için tehlikeli olabilecek edebi diyalog e, şeyini de denedim, denemek istedim bu defa. Çünkü e, e, tiyatroda bunu kabul edebiliyoruz, edebiyatta kabul edebiliyoruz. Ama sinemada daha zor kabul ediyoruz. Yani... E, İlk filmlerimde e, sinemada doğallığa çok fazla önem veriyordum. Biraz da o zamanın şey, şartları yüzündendi bu. Yani o daha becerilemeyen bir şeydi, az bulunuyordu filan. Fakat bugün o bayağı halledildi sinemada. Yani Türk sineması için konuşursam. Yani reklamlarda bile sokak dili artık başarılıyor, var yani. Sinemaya, sinemaya ait daha kendine has bir şey acaba olabilir mi gibi öyle bir denemeydi diyeyim yani. I use a lot of dialogue, but I use quite literary dialogue as well in this film. In literature and in the theatre, this kind of language is widely used. But in the cinema, it's quite dangerous. It may not work out well, but I tried to do this in the film. In my first films, I was careful to do more realistic, natural things. Now I realize that in the cinema, you can use this different language, even in advertising and on uh, television. More literary language can be used. So this time I've tried to uh, focus more on literary dialogues. Mezarcısı ya da Dostoyevski'nin Fetkası acaba sinemada çalışır mı gibi bir şey. 
Comme le fossoyeur de Shakespeare, le fait que It's like Shakespeare, Dostoevsky. Can what I wanted to do is see whether that language could work in the cinema. Anyone who wants to speak to this, did this literary dialogue pose a problem? Because I don't think uh, you're used to it. And uh, uh, even Haluk, uh, I don't know how much. Uh, well, you have probably done that on stage, but the, the, you others, this is a kind of a dialogue that you perhaps aren't accustomed to. Yeah, well, it is. Uh, it was, uh, actually. Uh, when I first got the script, um, it was frightening because it was 183 pages long. <laughs> it was like a New York telephone book. <laughs> and... Uh, but after I read the script for the first time, uh, which was after a show, um, after midnight, and I finished it around about three o'clock in the morning, uh, I sent a message to Bill Gay saying that I love the script and I thought the script was very honest and uh, no holds barred about self-criticism in the script and beautifully written. So I'd love to be in this film. Um, and I'm very happy uh, that I've done it. But the dialogues, uh, I had pages and pages of dialogues. Uh, some of our scenes with Demet or with uh, Melissa, we rehearsed them beforehand. And when we were rehearsing in front of the camera or when we were shooting the scene, it was uh, like, without cutting, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes long scenes. Mm -hmm. And we had rehearsed like, like we would rehearse a play. Uh, but when we were rehearsing in front of the camera, um, uh, it wasn't just a, a cold rehearsal. The camera was on at all times. We, re we, we shot the rehearsals as well. So I believe, I don't know uh, how correct I am by saying this, you have something like 150 or 200 hours of material? 200. 200 hours of material. And uh, three hours, 16 minutes film out of that. Uh, which was wonderful. So, therefore, the, the dialogue, which I'm very used to uh, by doing a lot of theatre, um, but it was very extraordinary for a, for a movie. Melissa, how was it for you, the dialogue? Have you done stage as well? Oh, yes, but it was a challenge, actually. <laughs> uh, it, it was hard to memorise all the dialogues, mm. but... Uh, as only had looks at, uh, we done many rehearsals. Uh, rehearsals so uh, while we were shooting the scenes, everything was uh, was okay. No problem with the dialogues. Thank you. This a gentleman has been waiting patiently. Start work. Okay. Um, from magazine Vivil Cinema Italy. Uh, first of all, I found your your film. Pessimistic, but so brave and so sincere. Thank you very much. And uh, I think in the film uh, there are many matters. Uh, there is uh, the continuing, in my opinion, of the, the, your team about husband and wife, uh, with, we've seen in climate. There are social matters about rich and poor, but there are also political matters. So uh, it's a delicate question, my question. Uh, is a kind of reading uh, the political issue in the film. For instance, there is a dialogue between the two protagonists, female protagonists, about violence, and this concerning when somebody is doing violence against you, it's better not to answer, maybe we will stop. And uh, I want to know with something concerning the present situation in Turkey. And there is uh, the dialogue with the wife. Uh, it's a personal uh, matter between husband and wife, but also there is something concerning uh, how could be naive to raise funding uh, with this kind of organization. And it could be a reference of how could be naive to do something uh, in, uh, you know, on the base of very fragile matters. And uh, also there is the issue about the moral to how to be a, a good Muslim or not. I don't want to expose you, but I want to know if this film is not only your personal uh, uh, matter about life and about family, but also if you are near the present situation in, in Turkey. Thank you. Uh, 
Actually, uh, the present, uh, yani Türkiye'de şu andaki durum aslında e, başka zamanlardaki durumda e, insan doğasının genel e, şeyleriyle açıklanabilir. Yani e, aslında e, nasıl söylemek lazım bunu şimdi? E, yani ben film yaparken hani şu anki duruma gönderme yapayım böyle düşünmem. Zaten düşünemezsiniz. Yani çünkü bu film mesela gezi olaylarından bile önce çekildi. Yani bugünkü durum hakkında bir şey söylemeye kalksanız 3 sene sonra ortaya çıkar. Yani dolayısıyla sinemanın güncelliği kovalaması hem zor hem de gerekli değil bence. Yani sinema e, ve sanat bence daha e, en azından benim için e, daha temellerine inmek durumunda durum şeyim. Yani bir gazetecilik yapmasına gerek yok. Yani e, o nedenle benim sosyal konular o kadar ilgimi çekmiyor. Çünkü sosyal konuların e, insan psikolojisinin bir takım temel nitelikleriyle de açıklanabileceğini düşünüyorum zaten. E, e, nasıl söyleyeyim? Mesela e, yani her kültürün farklı alışkanlıkları var mesela. Yani mesela Japonya'da küçücük bir olayda bir insan sen işin zorlaşıyor ama bunu durayım mı? Tabii, hadi yapayım ben. <gülüyor> Uh, dans mon film, en fait, je ne fais pas allusion à la situation film, présente I en don't Turquie. Allude to the current situation uh, in Turkey. Je, de toute façon, uh, ce film a été tourné the film avant tout ce qui s'est passé avant les événements du mois de juin. Everything happened before the events in June. Je pense pas qu'un réalisateur And I don't think that uh, a, a director à should allude to current events si in the country. De, si je dois parler de la situation présente, If je I want to talk about the current situation, I'll do it in three years' time, but not now. Everything that happens in our country and what happened before can be explained when you think about human nature. As I was saying, when I make a film, I don't think about the present situation. I believe that the director should view things in a broader perspective. Yani sanatçının görevi bence gazeteciden öte yani e, güncel olayları e, toplumun farkında olmasını sağlamaktan öte e, daha başka bir şey olmalı bence. Yani e, o kültürü oluşturan, yani o kültüre yeni bir anlayış enjekte etmek gibi. Mesela demin e, başladığım sözü bitireyim. Hani Japonya'da diyordum, Japonya'da e, söz gelimi ufak bir olayda bir insan istifa ederken Türkiye'de etmiyor. Yani e, çok daha büyük olaylarda. Hiç kimsenin istifa ettiğini görmüyoruz ama eğer sanat aracılığıyla biz o kültürün içine onur, gurur ya da ne bileyim utanma duygusu gibi duyguları enjekte edebilirsek yani insanların utanma eşiklerini düşürebilirsek bir yerde başka bir deyişle belki bunlar olacaktır. Yani daha, do- daha çok böyle bir şeye hizmet etmek zorunda durumunda yani yoksa bir olayda suçluları bulmak ya da o olayın insanların duymasını sağlamak bu daha çok gazetecilerin yapması gereken bir şey gibi geliyor. Yani tamam sanatçı da yapabilir yani o da işe yarar da öbürü daha önemli geliyor bana. Yani insanların ruhuna sızmak bir şekilde sanat yoluyla. Çünkü sanattan başka şey yapamıyor bunu kolay kolay. Ee, yani kendi zayıf taraflarımızla yüzleşmek mesela. Yani bu da mesela bizim kültürde çok hani yaygın bir şey değildir. İnsanın kendini kandırması daha kolaydır doğuda, doğulu toplumlarda daha bireyleşmesine daha bireylerin oluşmasına sağlamak falan kolay gelsin je pense que le I think that the duty of a film director is different from that of a journalist. Of course, directors can do the work of journalists, but I think directors should focus more on the soul of the spectator. In Japan, for example, when someone dies, someone uh, steps down from government. In Turkey, even if there are deaths, nobody steps down, nobody resigns. Maybe it's a question of culture. In my films, sometimes I may 
uh, try to give people ideas that I view as a real success. I can nourish their soul, and spectators can learn to be ashamed about certain things. Then I think it's quite a success for the film. I believe a director, therefore, should work more in that direction. <laughs> <gülüyor> Dolayısıyla hani bu tip sosyal reflekslerle film yapmak bana çok motive edici gelmiyor. Yani onun yerine insan ruhunu anlamak, anlamaya çalışmak diyebilirim. Daha çok kendi filmlerimin yapılma sebebi olarak. For me, this kind of way of making films doesn't really motivate me. I try to understand the human soul more. İnsanlığın Mars'tan bile daha az şey bildiğini düşünüyorum. And and I think that we know perhaps less about man and how he reacts on Earth than about Mars. Madame Gillan, perhaps I could ask you, can you tell us about the collaboration? How, in day-to-day -day terms, do you work together? Nasıl beraber çalıştınız? Nasıl gitti beraber senaryoz mu? Biz zaten son üç filmde... In the microphone, please. Biz son üç filmde zaten genellikle senaryoları beraber yazıyoruz. Bu filmde biraz daha yoğun çalıştık. Altı aylık bir süreç zarfında. Yoğun bir şekilde gerek tartışarak, gerek kavga ederek, hatta bazen şiddetli geçimsizliğe varacak noktalara gelerek. Ama sonuçta... Yine de uyumlu bir e, birlikteliğimiz olduğunu düşünüyorum senaryo konusunda en azından. We've been working together on three films now this time round. The writing was very intense. We held a lot of discussions. We often had quite violent quarrels. But I believe that uh, we work very fruitfully together. Bu konulardaki e, benzerliklerimizle alakalı olarak e, iyi bir e, çalışma yaptığımızı düşünüyorum. We work very well together because I think we view uh, people and life uh, in a similar way. That's why we get along well when it comes to writing the screenplay. Thank you. On a question sur le côté après monsieur. Hi, uh, I'm Natalie from Cable TV Hong Kong, and I've got a question for all the actors, if possible. Uh, what's the most challenging part for you in this movie? Is it like the preparation work uh, about the long script, or is it actually during the shooting? Thank you. Oyunculara geliyor bu soru. Neresi zordu sizin için senaryoya çalışmak mı, kamera önü mü? Neresi en zor yeriydi? I think that it was very difficult being in front of the cameras. I speak many languages, but not French, so I'll actually speak in Turkish. What was most difficult was to be acting and to be filmed. Günlerde çünkü birkaç versiyon çalışıyorduk hep. Bir sefer baştan sona tamamen senaryoya bağlı kalıyorduk. Bir seferinde bir alışımızda baştan sona sahneyi istediğimiz gibi doğaçlama şansı tanıyordu bize Nuri Bilge. Ee, ve bütün bunların içinden o biriktiriyordu ve dediği gibi e, Haluk Bilginer'in uzun uzun çekiyorduk yani e, içimize sinene kadar 
daha doğrusu Nuri Bilge'nin içine sinip tamam diyene kadar çalışıyorduk ve çok heyecan vericiydi. It was uh, stressful, but extremely interesting for us. We were filmed for long stretches of time. First, we started playing things exactly as in the screenplay. Second, we were able to improvise. That was the second time round, and we were being filmed all the time. So for us. Uh, we had a lot of scope when it came to acting, and then he cho chose the best scenes, and we were quite pleased with what we were doing. I would like to say that I would like to say that I would like to say that I it was more like uh, working in the theater. We worked uh, like uh, working on a play. Monsieur. Thank you very much uh, uh, for sleeping uh, for sleep and winter. I'm, uh, my name is Dakunya. I'm from Bombay in India. And thank you for speaking in Turkish. I picked up many words that appeared in Hindustani. The location that you chose could not have been in Chekhov. It is a fantastic location. Why did you choose it? And how did it help your story? How did you? How, how did the location that you chose, ah. the wonderful cave-like rooms, how did it help the story that you wanted to tell, which you say was drawn from some Chekhov stories? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I didn't want to choose this location. <laughs> but I had to, finally, after a location scouting. I wanted it to be a simple place, actually. But it had to be a touristic place, because, you know, uh, you need uh, we, I searched the boutique hotels, who works even in winter. That was the only area. Cappadocia, in the winter time, you can still find tourists. And I needed an hotel which is a bit isolated outside of the town. That was the only place I could find. Because uh, I was a bit afraid of choosing Cappadocia because it may be, it could be a bit too beautiful or too interesting and things like that. So, uh, but I didn't show it that much, uh, I hope. Uh, <laughs> I showed it in the first snow because uh, it, uh, we needed a change in the, some, uh, in the atmosphere and uh, when he goes, we need some white shots, I think, in psychologically. And I wish it wasn't that cold. <laughs> <laughs> minus 10 degrees at times. Yeah. <coughs> and Freezing. it didn't snow enough, you know. The yeah. snow shots has been shot very sh in a very short time, <laughs> in one day. Uh, and some of them in east of Turkey. Gökhan, do you have a preference for exteriors or for interiors or for people's faces? Sen dış, ha, dış mekanla iç mekanlar senin bir daha çok çekmeyi sevdiğin yerler nereler yüz mü iç mekan dış mekan? Yani e, özel bir şey yoktu e, sadece iç mekanlarda uzun diyaloglarda. <gülüyor> Yani sahneye nasıl yardım ederiz diye düşündük. Ee, <gülüyor> ve o iç mekanların ışık duygusu için çok uğraştık. Bunları bir gelin. I don't have any preference. We worked a lot uh, in the inside to see uh, whether that wouldn't be more worthwhile because we had very lengthy dialogues, so we wanted to create this atmosphere. In fact, it was quite long. 
People often had to go to the washroom because the sequences were so very lengthy. I have a question in the back, Madame. Uh, Maria Pia Fusco, La Repubblica, Italy. I'm here. Sorry to ask you, but we are following the news that every day comes from Turkey. Uh, with what mood do you follow them? With hope, despair, uh, bitterness? Türkiye'den gelen haberleri her gün seyrediyoruz. Sizin ruh haliniz nedir? Umut. Sizin ruh haliniz nedir diye soruyor. Hani umut mu, üzüntü? Buruk bir sevinç yaşıyoruz bence yani şu anda. Çok. Evet genelde Türkiye'deki son we're quite pleased, but it was a, a slightly bitter day for us. Duyguları aynı anda hissediyoruz gibi bir şey. Yani söylediklerinizin hepsi yani bir miktar var muhakkak. Tam biz buraya gelirken bir de başladı şeyler. Ee, dediği şey dediği gibi yani iki, evet. insanın iki duyguyu aynı anda hissetmesi gibi bir şey. Yani Peki. aklımız, gönlümüz orada evet. ama e, burada da bizim için çok özel e, bir hafta yaşıyoruz hepimiz. Burada olmak, bu festivalin içinde olmak, e, filmimizle e, mutlu olmak, filmimizi tanıtmak çok e, güzel duygular. Ama bir taraftan da işte sosyal medya aracılığıyla, internet aracılığıyla son oradan gelen haberleri alıyoruz ve biraz sevincimiz şuramızda kalıyor boğazımızda. Öyle bir ruh hali içindeyiz. As you said, we do indeed share these feelings. This disaster in the mine happened when we were here. Although we're here and we're presenting our film and we're very pleased to have the film here, we're very sad. As I said, it is a bitter joy for us to be here. We keep thinking about Turkey while being here. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this question is to Mr. Nuri Ceylan. My name is Sunil Doshi from Bombay. Uh, I see a, a kind of a pattern in your film with climate, three monkeys, the frailties of a human being, the family system breaking about pride, prejudice, ego, uh, being shattered of a man. Uh, uh, continuously you explore those themes. So in this particular film, what was your starting point, the origin of an idea? Was it the Chekhov first, or what is your idea first? Or it was an idea which then got into Chekhov? And the second thing that I found was Aydin, the principal protagonist. Is a little bit you in the film? Bunun önceki filmlerinizde hep insanları, insan ruhunu inceliyorsunuz. Bu filmin çıkış noktası neydi? Chekhov'un hikayeleri mi yoksa başka bir çıkış noktası da var mı? Bir de Aydın karakteri biraz siz misiniz? Yok, Aydın karakterinin ben olduğunu söyleyemem ama yani benden de parçalar tabii ki var ama ee, genel olarak ben ve tabi entelektüel bir çevrede e, sonuçta yaşadığım için arkadaşlarım yani e, yakın çevremde çok iyi tanıdığım e, arkadaşlarım ve kendi ruhumdan izler taşıyan bir karakter. E, özelliklerini çok iyi bildiğim, çok iyi tanıdığım bir karakter. E, Yani çıkış noktamız tabii ki bir hani bunu, bunu, bunu bir söyleyeyim, Nuri, onu bir söyleyeyim, soru tamam. Le karakter de Aydın, effectivement, il y a des points autobiographiques, mais ce n'est pas du tout moi. Aydın is partly autobiographical, but uh, he's not me at all. I do know a lot of people who are in that situation, though. There are actors uh, in Turkey who stopped working and have opened up hotels in other little towns. So I'm familiar with that kind of character, and I have friends who are like that. So it's a world I'm very familiar with. It's not exactly me. I don't know, not again. Uh, so maybe uh, it's necessary to say that there's a play with words in Turkish. Uh, Aydın, the name of my character, also means intellectual in Turkish. 
So that's a little play with words, pardon, yeah. Williams. <coughs> and the first question? Uh, filming, the starting point of the film, of course, it, it was a Chekhov, several Chekhov stories, but of course I wouldn't, we wouldn't start this uh, if we didn't see it in our real life as well. It was, uh, these stories was like, written for Turkey, I think, for me. Uh, actually, human is the same everywhere. That's what I, how I see life. Uh, but I cannot say that I like to film uh, on certain specific subjects or things. I, I like more ambiguous films about life in general, which leaves a kind of feeling uh, at the end. I mean, uh, I cannot, uh, sometimes they ask me, uh, what's the word or what's your sentence of your film? I really don't like that in general. Mademoiselle. Hello, uh, I'm Sara Nabil from Egypt. St standing up uh, so we can see you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I just want to ask you about the Turkish uh, cinema. And um, if we look at the Turkish uh, series, we found a lot of um, um, Turkish series in the world, Arab uh, East, uh, for in uh, Middle East, and they are very famous. And uh, uh, actors and actresses in Turkey are very famous in our Arab world. Why is the cinema is not the same famous? And what where is the problem here? Why is not cinema the same famous as uh, series? Ee, Mısır'da birçok Türk dizisi seyrediyoruz, oyuncuları tanıyoruz. Niye Türk sineması da bu kadar çok gelmiyor da Türk dizileri geliyor daha çok sizce? <gülüyor> evet. e, because the serials are easier to watch. I mean, they don't go deep into. I mean, for the mass, uh, for the television, they are more suitable for everywhere, I think. Films are more sophisticated, more, uh, it's more difficult to distribute everywhere. Yeah, and it's, it's true that in Arab world, the theater, art house theaters are very few and very limited, so that's why I guess it's, I mean, for Turkish film, as for French film or uh, Western film, very difficult to be distributed. Nuri, I'd like to ask about the cast. Many directors have um, uh, actors they're comfortable with, they like working with, they call on uh, repeatedly. Here you've done something astonishing. You've created a cast of people you haven't worked with before, I, I don't think. What were you looking for? And perhaps I would ask the actors, how did Nuri approach you? How did you um, uh, audition for the, the, the part? And how was he on set? Bütün oyunculara geliyor soru aslında. Ee, Nuri ile nasıl çalıştınız, nasıl audition yaptı, nasıl seçtiniz? Çünkü daha önce çalışmadığınız bir yönetmen. Nasıl oldu bu süreç? Uh, he's, he's an amazing director and he gave us lots of space to express ourselves. And he made us uh, feel good about our performance. So I really appreciated that. And I'm really glad that I had a chance to work with him and looking forward to have the chance again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Audition? Yep. Oh, we, we didn't make any auditions uh, yeah, before the shooting. You. <laughs> oh, sorry. Nuri Bilge Ceylan, bir akşam üzeri telefon etti bana. Bir kahve içebilir miyiz dedi. Ee, tabii hemen müsaitim evdeyim de şu anda dedim akşamüstü bir kahve çay içtik sonra tesadüf oldu geçen yıl aranızda olan Türkiye'nin e, yazar yönetmen ve yapımcısı Yılmaz Erdoğan benim e, çok yakın dostum ve iş arkadaşım ve eski partnerim hala da devam ediyoruz ama şu ara e, film, film yapmadık birlikte e, tesadüfen bir şey sormak için aradı beni Aa, dedim biraz önce Nuri Bilge ile kahve içtik dedim 
Winter sleep. Tebrik ederim dedi. <gülüyor> Et donc, euh, m'a appelé, euh, une In fact, um, Nori called me up at the end of one afternoon and asked if I could go and have coffee, coffee with him. I agreed. We went for coffee. And then the actor, Nurzan Van, who I've worked with a lot, and uh, I worked uh, with him on once upon a time in Anatolia, and I said, well, I've just had coffee with Nuri, and he said, congratulations, winter sleep. I think I've already answered part of this question uh, before, but I can uh, also say, uh, working with Nuri Bilge Ceylan uh, was an was a wonderful experience. Um, it was a joy, actually. And what I noticed uh, was that Nuri Bilge Ceylan is a master of communicating with an actor, a master of uh, asking what he wants and master of getting what he wants from the actor. Uh, because with a lot of directors, you find that he or she is more interested in what and how uh, the scene looked. But with Nuri Bilge Ceylan, he knows how to speak to an actor, he knows how to get the performance from an actor, and he knows acting, I think, more than actors do. So that's what I wanted to say, and uh, in front of everybody, I'd like to thank him for that. <laughs> you. We have a question here, sir. Hello, I'm uh, Peter de Bruun from uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands. Um, I have a question for Mr. Ceylan. Um, I think this may be your most ironic uh, work uh, uh, to date. There's a lot of irony in this film, small ironies in the conversations. Um, would you agree that uh, the ironic view of life in the world is becoming more prevalent in, in your films and that this ironic touch is becoming more uh, important for your work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the writing uh, duration was interesting in this movie. Ebru also told it about it. Uh, we fight it a lot, but it's necessary. Uh, first of all, because during the fight, Ebru's brain is working much better, <laughs> 10 times better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's, it's the same for me. If uh, I cannot find these words in normal talk, yeah. like now, yeah. but during the fight, yeah. uh, I really find much better dialogues, <laughs> <laughs> just in order to overcome. Uh, when we fight, we do it for hours, till the morning sometimes, because each one wants to say the last word. Um, so uh, when I work with other people, generally, uh, in the script, since I am more experienced uh, in cinema, they don't uh, say anything against me. They accept whatever I say. But because he is, she is my wife, <laughs> she doesn't do so. <laughs> so she has more rights. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so, uh, of course, uh, but of course, since I am director, uh, I give the last decision. <laughs> uh, but if we work about her film, uh, so he will say the last word. Uh, so I must say, in this movie, some dialogues, they, Ebru still doesn't approve. Uh, and, uh, but I insisted on them. Uh, uh, but it has to be like that. Um, I think I, I went a bit far away <laughs> from your question. <laughs> That's probably our scenes, our argument scenes with my sister and my wife is too long uh, because he argued with Ebru until the morning. Long <laughs> arguments reflected uh, in the script. <laughs> but when we, when we argue, uh, we find such an interesting dialogue and I'm al always after that, I say to myself, why didn't I record this? <laughs> but at the beginning, you never know that you will talk like that. If I knew it, I would definitely record it. <laughs> because you. it's not repeatable. You cannot, and in the morning, you want to write what we talked, you can't do it. 
Poland. Um, it's a great honor to stand in front of you. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, could you answer my question? Uh, is it a hope? Do, do you see hope for your characters? And uh, I encourage also actors to answer my question, because we know that all of, you, all of your characters have uh, good intentions, but we know where it uh, may uh, lead them. Uh, do they finally find their way, not to hell, but maybe to paradise? What is your opinion? Thank you. E, karakterinizde umut görüyor musunuz? Oyuncular da soruyor. Senin karakterli Xsan da soruyor bu soruyu. Umut görüyor musunuz? Yani hepsi iyi niyetli ama e, nereye götürdüğü belli yani sonunda ama yine de umut görüyor musunuz bu karakterlerde? Valla bana kalırsa e, yani hayatta ne kadar umut varsa orada da o kadar var. Yani ben şeyi kesinlikle sevmiyorum. Hani sinem filmlerde filmlerin e, işte sonuna, şurasına, burasına böyle umut koymak lazım gibi bir yaygın bir anlayış var. Yani pesimistik olmaya hakkı yok filmin gibi. Çünkü yani pesimistik olmak gerektiğinde gerçekçi olmaktır. Ben e, yani gerçeği nasıl görüyorsam, nasıl hissediyorsam o kadar e, öyle yani öyle bir hesabım yok daha doğrusu. Yani umut şu kadar umut olmalı 10 derece şu falan öyle bir terazim hiç yok. Ama hayatta ne kadar umut varsa onda da o kadar var. Yani açık bırakıyoruz. Her şey her yöne gidebilir. Il y, a autant de per... Il y a autant d'espoir dans mes personnages. There is as much hope in my characters as in life, in real life. I don't like to portray hope at the end of the film. That's what some people do. They end on a note of hope. I'm not like that. I'm fairly realistic, I think. Sometimes you have to be pessimistic. But um, for me, as I said, there is as much hope in my characters as there is in real life. Halun karakterinin söylediği umut dolu diye nitelendirilebilecek sözler beni hafifçe utandırdığı için biraz böyle ifade daha sonraki ifadelerinde onu bulanıklaştırmaya çalıştım. Yani kurguda. Sanki Haluk bunları söyleyerek belli bir yükü üzerinden atmış ve bütün yükü kadının üzerine atmış gibi. Daha sonraki hani o kadın planında omuzları çökmüş falan. Öyle bir şey yaptım biraz. Yani yoksa çok biraz utandırdı beni yani o halde bitmesi. E, çünkü yani eylemlerimizin içinde hep küçük de olsa başka hesaplar olduğunu düşünüyorum ve bunların verilmesi gerektiğini de düşünüyorum. Yani o sözler tüm sadece çıplak haliyle sözlerle ilişkiye girerek şey yaparsak ele alabileceğimiz bir hale getirilirse bana inandırıcı gelmiyor. Yani o sözlerin de çünkü Haluk o sözleri belki kendisini rahatlatmak için de söyleyebilir karakter. Ya da belli bir amaca ulaşmak için de söyleyebilir. Duygusunun hep kalmasını istiyorum bir şekilde. Yani başarabildim mi bilmiyorum ama ondaki daha sonra o şekilde de dediğim şekilde de okunabilecek bir şey var orada yani. Koymaya çalıştım diyeyim. What Haluk says at the end of the film struck me as holding out too much hope. I felt a bit ashamed, so I wanted to make the end more ambiguous. I wanted him to, put, uh, to have his wife bear some of the burden. I tried with the editing to change that a little bit. In films, I don't like to perceive directly what people say. He could have said this just to feel better himself without even being honest. So I wanted things to remain a bit confused. Well, I, I may uh, add to that a little bit. Uh, there, of course, there is always hope. Life is hope. But whether that... Uh, whether what you hoped will be realized or not is another question, obviously. Like in this film, I didn't uh, hope to do what he wanted to do, um, acting, writing, whatever. Obviously, he was a bad actor, and he's a bad writer. He, he's unsatisfied and uh, unhappy. But what he needs to do to be satisfied and to be happy he doesn't have the material to be able to do that. He's not talented enough. He's not equipped enough 
to do all these things that he hopes for, he dreams of. Therefore, yes, there is hope, but will Aydin uh, achieve what he hoped from life? I don't think so. Um, so there's a glimmer of hope, but not enough. Mrs. Alakan, we haven't heard from you. Perhaps uh, in closing I could ask you, what is the role of a producer of Nuri uh, Birgir Salam? And uh, it's, what are the particular difficulties of producing his films in Turkey? <laughs> Evet, e, Nuri Bilge'nin yapımcısı olarak yani nasıl Hı -hı. prodüs ve Türkiye'de bir Nuri Bilge Ceylan filmi yapmak ne kadar zor, ne kadar kolay? Nasıl beraber çalışıyorsunuz? Türkiye'de, pardon sesim için, e, şöyle söyleyeyim. E, Türk, yani biz 10 yıldır birlikte çalışıyoruz, birlikte 4 film yaptık. <coughs> We've been working together for 10 years. We've made four films together. Things get better as we make more and more films together. Dolayısıyla Memento Films ve Alexandra çalışmak müthişti. Türkiye, Fransa ortaklığında Almanya'da var. Ortak yapım olarak çok iyi bir çalışma gerçekleştirdik. Yani ortak yapım yaptığımız zaman istediğimiz koşulları sağlayabiliyoruz. Onu söyleyebilirim. Sorry about my voice. Says Zeynep. That puts us in a strong position when it comes to co-production. We can bring about the optimal conditions for shooting. So, in fact, our, our joint work together has been extremely productive. It's, it's the second time I'm working with uh, Zeynep and Nuri, and uh, we, I discovered Nuri's work actually three years ago here in Cannes with, uh, by seeing uh, Anatolia on the big screen at the uh, Palais des F in Grand Théâtre Lumière. It was uh, astonishing. And uh, and so I've been. We distribute uh, Anatolia in France with great success, and the start of our relationship with Zeynep and Nuri. And I hope to continue this work together a long time, because I guess I mean I'm sure that Nuri's work needs to be more. Um, uh, deeply distributed around the world. I mean, uh, it's a fantastic director, and um, and I think this film is uh, um, surprising, surprisingly the most accessible film he has done so far. Because I mean, I think everyone around the world can be can respond to this. Thank you very much. I'm afraid our time is up. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for this wonderful film. Thank you.